Hello and welcome to the history of Babylon 5. Today we're going to cover the Grey Council and the Mimbari caste system. The Grey Council is the ruling body of the Mimbari Federation. The nine members of the council stand in a circle, their backs to the darkness, their face to the light, so as to stand in the grey. Being minimalist, there is no furniture in the room, and the members simply stand in the beams of light. An additional lit spot is positioned in the middle of the circle where guest stands while presenting to the group. A canopy of equipment exists above the heads of the council members that control the lighting and can project holographic imagery for the members to see. Very little else is known of the Grey Council leaders, as Membari are extremely secretive of such things. The Chosen One acts as president of the group, organizing the discussions by calling on the various members, accepting guests and presenters to the group, presenting an agenda for discussion, and being the one to call and end the gathering. The only known undisputed leader since Valen was Dukat. Each of the counselors are served by assistants that remain outside the council chambers, ready to fulfill the tasks asked of their masters. Before the formation of the council, castes would compete for dominance over one another by seeing which of their leaders were willing to sacrifice their lives to the Starfire Wheel. The Great Council was founded in the year 1260 by Valen during the First Shadow War and was composed of nine members, each given the honorific title of Satai. To strike a balance between the castes, Valen called forth three from the warrior caste, three from the religious caste, and three from the worker caste. By tradition, the Grey Council lived apart from Mimbari society, rarely leaving their customized Charlon class war cruiser, the Valen Tha. In 2259, the Grey Council elected to oust Delenn from their number, partly because she had rejected the role of leader, and partly because she had undergone the transformation against their warnings. Rather than replace her with a member of the religious caste, they chose to bring in Alt Neru of the Star Riders clan and member of the warrior caste, giving that caste a majority in the council and upsetting the balance it had provided. Valen foretold that the council would be broken during the Second Shadow War. That event occurred in 2260, after the war had begun in full. The Grey Council had repeatedly chosen not to intervene in any wars or conflicts, that were threatening the galaxy during the previous two years. Delenn confronted the council about their actions, accusing them of breaking their covenant with Valen. She seized the leadership staff and snapped it in two, declaring the council disbanded. Five of the nine members, all of whom were religious and worker, chose to follow her and the council was broken as it was prophesized. In 2261, members of the warrior caste, eager for a power grab, started a civil war which claimed the lives of their fellow Membari. That slaughter led Delenn to offer Shakiri, leader of the rebelling warriors, the surrender of the religious at the ancient gathering facility at the city of Verni on Mimbar. The facility was home to the Starfire Wheel, a powerful device used by the ancients to help determine which caste was suitable to rule. When Shakiri arrived, Delenn challenged him to adhere to the rule set down by the ancients, whom Shakiri, at least on the surface, showed admiration for. The rule was that the leader of each caste was to enter the circle, and the caste of the one who stayed within long enough to be consumed by the beam would be allowed to rule. In this way, the leadership, who had been protected during the fighting, would also have to risk their lives for their cause. While Delenn stood undaunted in the face of certain death, Shakiri entered wearingly and only at the prompting of Nehru, showing more fear than he would have wished to let on. As the beam's intensity grew, Shakiri fled the wheel's fury, cowering in pain from the burns he had sustained. Delenn weakened but refused to leave, contrary to what she had said she would do when she had arranged the events with Lanier and Nehru, who had been secretly working with her to end the war. Nehru entered the wheel to rescue Delenn from the beam's power. Nehru reveled in the wheel's fire and declared his conversion to the religious caste. At that moment, he called his fellow cast members to end the war, to listen to Delenn, and to heed her wisdom. Seconds later, Nehru was vaporized. This is pertinent to the Great Council as it leads to how the Council was reorganized. Delenn reformed the Council into one of five workers, two religious, and two warriors, so that the workers would, at last, have a stake in building Mimbar's future. And we'll be right back after this. Mimbari Casts 
Membari cultural tradition divided its population into three equal groups or castes, worker, warrior, and religious. Whether one becomes religious or warrior or worker caste is something that arises early on, not through birth or genetics, but what you are called to do or feel called to do. If you believe you are called to the religious life, you go to that part for a time, a few years, and that is determined by you and to a certain extent others. If you seem not suited towards that, they may work with you to find what you are more suited for and perhaps you felt expected to be called a certain way, but that's not really where you're best suited. Posted by JMS on Usenet, June 14th, 1995. The Worker Cast. They are the commercial pilots, engineers, construction workers, map makers, miners, welders, manufacturers, technicians, scientists, and low-level administrators of the Mimbari Federation. The language of the worker caste has a simple, unadorned style when compared to the dialects of the other castes, and is suited to technical and scientific description. Originally, workers were held in a condition of near slavery, but this changed when Valen elevated them to equality with the other two castes. Throughout most of Membari society, worker castes have always been caught in the middle and or taken a back seat in the struggles within their society while religious and warrior castes struggle over authority and issues of defense. The worker class does the building or rebuilding in service of their policies. Despite this, some have said that Valen did not consider the idea of workers serving in the Annala Shock to be unacceptable, that towards the end of the Shadow War he did indeed allow members of the worker caste to serve as rangers, and that it was only after he went beyond that the workers were once again forbidden from being in the Anala shock. Many scholars and workers contended that there was no proof to support that belief and dismissed it as pure myth. However, with the installment of Jeffrey Sinclair as Anala shock Na in 2259, members in the Anala shock was again finally open to Membari of all classes, including worker. After the Membari Civil War, they were given more representation in the government with five spots on the Grey Council instead of just three. Dillon once referred to the maintenance workers of Babylon 5 as worker casts, as a sign of respect. And we'll be right back after this. The warrior caste is one of the three Membari castes and are the traditional defenders of their homeworld. Warrior caste members generally shape their head bones into a rigid spike-like crown with high crests. Membari warriors are generally more aggressive than other Membari, fiercely loyal, patriotic, nationalistic, and usually less friendly with other races. They are often seen as stubborn and ruthless by other castes. But like all Membari, the warriors are trained to serve and are ready to give their lives for their clan or their people if called upon to do so at once. Just as other castes are fully committed to their paths, so are they committed to theirs. Thus, they are fierce in war and heedless of their own lives. As with all things Holy Membari, the warrior castes are highly ritualistic in all of their affairs. One such is funerary customs and burial rites of important leaders. Warriors consider the vessel of their leader's soul, the body, possibly all of them, to be of extreme importance and reverence. When such a figure dies, their body is generally displayed with honors throughout the Membari Federation and sometimes elsewhere. When going aboard with the ceremony, the body is carried aboard a war cruiser with all weapons on display. The ceremony itself involves the carrying of the deceased's casket alongside the chiming of bells and strumming of harps, the beating of small drums and the bearing of flags. Then a comrade, a friend, or a relative venerates their name with honor. On missions of peaceful contact, the custom is to display all weapons available to the other side, showing that they can see all of what they have. This is meant as a gesture of friendship and trust and a display of respect and strength. A human commander panicked and misinterpreted this as a threat and opened fire, which led to the outbreak of the Earth Membari War. Arts of Combat Although Membari warriors are not the sole bearers of arms amongst their people, they are given a more extensive military training program than the other castes. For centuries since the time of Valen, the government has been appropriating the warriors and helping them learn to fight. Aside from the standard training, strategy, tactics, logistics, piloting, hand-to-hand -hand combat, etc., 
Membari warriors put great emphasis on the fighting pike, which most are seen carrying. Many are taught exclusively by the contemporary Grandmaster Durhan. The five clans of the warrior castes are the Star Riders. They are the oldest clan and traditionally a mounted force. The Moon Shields, a traditionally mounted force. The Wind Swords, a traditionally mounted force and the most militant of all clans. The Night Walkers, an infantry force of foot soldiers. And the Fire Wings, the first to use flying machines in battle. The Religious Caste, they have been the most important of the Mimbari castes in contemporary history. So much so that the religious and spiritual matters that they stand for take precedence over all others. Their policies, even after the time of Valen, usually clash with those of the warrior caste. While they are termed religious, their function in Mimbari society is wider than simply being monks or priests, also filling the role of politicians and diplomats. Core beliefs. They believe that the universe is alive and conscious and has broken itself into many different forms of sentient life in order to better understand itself. They also believe that when a fellow Membari dies, his or her spirit joins the souls of all the others until it is reborn into the next generation of Membari. They have a core of beliefs known as the principles of sentient life. At a particular age, it is custom to go out to the Sea of Stars and find a purpose and meaning in the service of others on their voyage before the end of their lives. Thank you for watching the History of Babylon 5. Special thanks to the Babylon Project and all contributors for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can, if you have. Thank you. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.